Hey, it's uh, John Reed, JDOD.com. I got Vishman Sheikh here. How are you doing? Good, John. How are you? I'm um, good. We were having a lively discussion about the SAP store. Uh, you had a f previous video shoot with Dennis Hallett where early in the fall where you gave an update on the SAP store. What's the latest as far as the strategy behind the store, what you're trying to do with it? Yeah, so thanks, John, for meeting me. And uh, <clears throat> the SAP store has been already a good success for us. It's resulted in thousands of downloads taking place, both of the store itself plus the apps from within the store. Uh, we've already started influencing the pipe in the tens of millions. We've influenced a couple of deals that have actually occurred since we launched the store. And we have a number of active opportunities that we're working on. Our pipeline on the store continues to grow. We have about 20 additional partner apps that have been certified and are in the last uh, stages of being published onto the store. And we have a pipeline of about 250 apps that are being developed through our partner ecosystem. So that's all good. Um, the intent of us launching the store was essentially to send a market message to our customers that there is a single destination where they can come to find apps that are certified by SAP, so partner apps that have been certified by SAP or SAP apps. And we're starting to see um, hundreds of companies that are starting to download our app, come to the store, and start looking for their, that app. Um, as we move forward into the first quarter of this year, our goal is to definitely improve the usability. Uh, so we have launched an iOS app, which is called the SAP Mobile Apps, available on the App Store, Apple's App Store. We also have an app uh, in the Android, for the Android devices, it's called SAP Store, available on the Android Marketplace. And uh, we are improving our uh, core user experience, which is the browser-based user experience, by introducing an HTML version of the store, which will be much more readily accessible through tablets and through different devices. You and I were having some good debates off camera. Let's get into a couple of those. One of the areas is that you do require the Sybase Sumwire platform for all the apps that you feature on the store. Why is that? Very simple. You know, our customers um, have a certain core dependency on SAP being able to deliver secure, scalable apps. Um, as bring your own device becomes a strategy within our customer organizations, uh, it becomes increasingly more important to have one platform that can deliver user experiencing experiences across multiple devices in a secure manner. So whereas we start the discussion around an app and the user experience uh, end user will have using one of those apps, as the decision to buy moves forward, the discussion on security becomes very important and scalability and being able to publish across devices and so on and the affordability of being able to publish across all the devices become important. Hence, SUP becomes a core topic. This is the prescribed way SAP says scalable apps needs to be de delivered and deployed. So we start with SUP as a core tenant for being able to build scalable mobility within an organizations where they want to run secure, scalable processes on mobile devices. I don't think I disagree with any of that, but I have a very pas big passion for the smaller developer shops and the impact I think they can have on not only creativity and app design, UI design, um, but also the kind of apps that will really create an energy around the SAP mobile community. And my feeling is those folks, if you're going to stick with SUP, they're going to need access to it much easier than today. SUP in the cloud, perhaps some easy way of developing within those guidelines you've established. Do you agree or disagree what's going on there? Absolutely agree with you. So, you know, and we have initiatives underway on figuring out how we empower that individual developer to be able to build those apps that our customers will consume in a manner that is, is right for them, is, meets their corporate uh, requirements and co corporate governance requirements. So definitely absolutely agree with you that we, we are looking to empower the young developer, the independent developer. We see a lot of uh, cool influences on user experience. They, they're coming from different backgrounds and their ability to bring those experiences into the corporate world is a huge plus. So we definitely look forward to being able to empower those developers. So next time I talk with you, maybe we'll have some specific Absolutely. forward information on that. Now, there's also mm -hmm. the Silverlight thing, which came up recently in a back channel yes. discussion amongst mentors. There's been some complaints about Silverlight <laughs> making the store more cumbersome. You've talked about addressing that from an HTML5 perspective. What is that all about? So we fully agree that you know Silverlight is not the platform of choice. We, um, we were building on something that was in place for SAP. 
we've realized that it's time for us to be able to provide the store in a more ubiquitous and more accessible manner. And HTML5 seems to be the platform that's going to allow us to do that. It inherits a lot of the device features and functions within it so that you can get the device experience, plus it's very accessible. So in March, we're going to be releasing the SAP store with, uh, under the HTML5 uh, platform. And uh, that should you know, eliminate the silver light constraint that we've had so far. Now, the other thing I've been uh, uh, raising questions about is the proliferation of SAP storefronts. But you say that you've got that problem under control as well. So there's a lot of SAP stores right now, but Correct. you have a vision going forward. What's the vision? The vision is very straightforward. We have one SAP store. This is the brand which is our e-channels brand, which is online commerce on the, uh, with SAP will be conducted through SAP stores. And under the banner of SAP store, we will have a mobile app store, we will have a business analytics store, and on demand uh, for cloud applications in our by design store. Uh, so we will continue to open more departments in the store, so to speak, uh, servicing different verticals, different niche area. Again, a way for making it easier for our um, customers to be able to discover the right applications for their specific business needs. One thing I hadn't realized until you and I talked today is that moving past Silverlight to HTML5 will also allow you with, help you with the store issue because now you can move EcoHub off into the sunset. Right now it's still needed because it's an easy way to access apps without Silverlight, but eventually you're saying EcoHub will go away. That will consolidate the SAP store yeah. a little more easily. So EcoHub is a, is a compilation of different solutions. It has service solutions. You can search for mobile apps. You can search for business analytics. You can search for some of our core business suite extensions on the uh, on on the EcoHub. And as our commercial platform or the SAP store starts to uh, become more mature and starts to settle down, we will transition these apps again into those different departments, so to speak, for people to be able to find those apps. And we will foresee in the future EcoHub um, being sunset and those apps being migrated across into the SAP store. You heard it here, folks. One SAP store, that'd be something. Uh, so you've asked, answered a lot of fairly difficult questions, so it's time to give you a chance to, to push something out there, which is what can we look for with Sapphire and, and the SAP store? Is there anything going to happen there? Yeah, we're, so we, we are very ambitious about stores. So a couple of things is, you know, first and foremost, we want to ensure that there is a commercial model that's working by Sapphire. So um, as I mentioned, we have already started influencing deals in Pipe. Um, we have brought an 800 number that is dedicated for the store, again, to provide that support. We're looking at multiple channel access for our customers to be able to engage with us to find out, get their questions answered through the store. So, so that's what we want, to be able to provide that end-to-end -end customers buying experience in the store. Second is going to be number of partner apps and overall apps that we're going to be adding. As I mentioned, 20 are almost ready to go. We have a pipeline of 250, so we want to show that our ecosystem is tying back into SUP and into the store. So that will be, and then the third would be, I would say, is number of downloads, you know, how pervasive and accessible the store is really becoming. So we're looking at, you know, tens of thousands of downloads having occurred by Sapphire as well, and customer references. Well, thanks for your frank discussion on this important topic. Look forward to seeing you a little further spring. Okay, thank you, thanks. John. Appreciate that.